And I talked to the guy who'd been kind of my guide out there, who was a, a zoologist who'd been sent along to make, make sure I didn't sort of fall out of trees and so on. Um, and his name was Mark Carwardin. And I said, um, I would love it if we could come. Do you fancy the idea of sort of going around the world and looking for other rare and endangered species of animal, maybe de doing a book about it? He said, well, that's what I do for a living. Um, <laughs> so yeah, OK. Um, and so we did. Now, I, there was a pause at that moment, because I had a couple of novels I'd just contracted to write. Um, so I wrote Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency and The Long Dark Tea Time of the Soul. And then it was time to go. And the first place we went, we went to look for a particular animal, which was the Komodo dragon lizard. Now, you know what lizards are like, don't you? I mean, they're sort of <laughs> nice little sort of creatures. This, uh, the Komodo dragon lizard is a little bit bigger than that. Um, uh, the biggest one we saw actually was um, about 13 feet long. Uh, and its head came up to about here. Um, uh, fucking huge, I think, is the technical <laughs> term. Um, it's thought they're the origin of the Chinese dragon myth, because they are huge, well, huge giant, giant lizards. They're scaly. Um, they're man-eaters. Literally, they are man-eaters. And they don't actually breathe fire, but they do have the worst breath of any creature known to man. Um, and, um, and they live on this island called Komodo. Now, it, it's not enough, it turns out, that this island has 1,500, 1,500 man-eating dragons on it. Um, I mean, it, it, it turns out that actually the most endangered animal on the, on the island is anything other than the dragons. <laughs> and in fact, they, they, when I say they're man-eaters, they, 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 they don't actually eat you sort of straight out. They don't sort of lunge at you and just gobble you up. They sort of sneak around and they come and give you a bit of a bite. Um, because the, the, the saliva is so virulent that, uh, that your wound will not heal. And after a while, you will die. And, it doesn't, and so one of the dragons will get to eat you. It doesn't matter if it's the same one that ate you. They just, they just have a strategy of having as many dead and dying creatures lying around the island <laughs> as they can manage. And that kind of keeps them going. Um, but it, it turns out it's not enough that the island has 1,500 man-eating dragons on it. Just to make it a little bit more interesting, it also has more poisonous snakes on it per square meter of land than any equivalent area of land anywhere on Earth. So we approached Komodo, I have to say, slightly nervously and in a slightly roundabout way. Uh, in fact, we approached it in such a roundabout way that we went via Melbourne in Australia. Um, <laughs> And uh, the reason we went via Melbourne was that somebody who wanted to go and see them, uh, a man called Dr. Struan Sutherland. Um, and um, I actually want to read you a little bit of, um, uh, about him. He was um, uh, a, a great expert in, in, in snake venom. And um, I should apologize before I read this, actually, for the fact that I don't do a... My Australian accent isn't very good, but then, what the hell, you're all Americans, you won't know the difference anyway. Um, <laughs> There is in Melbourne a man who probably knows more about poisonous snakes than anyone else on Earth. His name is Dr. Struan Sutherland, and he has devoted his entire life to a study of venom. And I'm bored of talking about it, he said, when we went along to see him the next morning, laden with tape recorders and notebooks. Can't stand all these poisonous creatures, all these snakes and insects and fish and things, wretched things biting everybody, and then people expect me to tell them what to do about it. I'll tell them what to do. Don't get bitten in the first place. That's the answer. I've had enough of telling people all the time. Hydroponics, now that's interesting. <laughs> Talk to you all you like about hydroponics. Fascinating stuff, growing plants artificially in water. Very interesting technique. We'll need to know all about it if we're going to go to Mars and places. Where did you say you were going? Uh, Komodo. 
Well, don't get bitten, that's all I can say. <laughs> and don't come running to me if you do, because you won't get here in time. <laughs> and anyway, I've got enough on my plate. Look at this office, full of poisonous animals all over the place. See, this tank's full of fire ants, venomous little creatures. What are we going to do about them? Anyway, I got some little fairy cakes in, in case you were hungry. Would you like some little cakes? I can't remember where I put them. Um, um, there's some tea, but it's not very good. Anyway, sit down, for heaven's sake. So, you're going to Komodo. Well, I don't know why you want to do that, but I suppose you have your reasons. There are 15 different types of snake on Komodo, and half of them are poisonous. The only potentially deadly ones are the Russell's viper, the bamboo viper, and the Indian cobra. The Indian cobra is the 15th deadliest snake in the world, and all the other 14 are here in Australia. <laughs> That's why it's hard for me to find...